it is a Friday night mid-October that means we're starting to get hungry for turkey before we get going I know you're thinking nice hair yeah it goes with the shirt fat possum records do you know about fat possum records if you don't you're missing life fat possum records look it up you'll find out that some of the hipster music that you're listening to really started here yeah this is so 20 years ago for me anyway our turkey story starts in Vegas where I lived for about 14 years there was a place in Vegas called Farm Basket and they had this sandwich called the Super Clucker. No, it was a great, <laughs> yeah, that's good. The Great Gobbler. And the Great Gobbler was just white bread, turkey, mayonnaise, and cranberry sauce. And to this day, if you say Farm Basket or Great Gobbler, we are like getting in the car, going on the 138, braving that, and headed towards Vegas. So this weekend, I'm going to make great gobblers at home. Now in October, it's still hot in California, so we're not going to heat up the house by turning on the oven. We're going to do something smarter. Hey, do you remember Ron Popeil? Do you remember KTEL Records? Do you remember Ronco Records? Do you remember Popeil Pocket Fisherman? Hey, ever tried fishing with a lawnmower? Do you remember the Vegematic, that thing you'd slam and put vegetables in? Yeah, every cool invention that you've ever coveted your neighbor having was probably invented by Ron Popeil. And Ron Popeil really outdid himself when he came up with the Popeil rotisserie grill. So <laughs> we're going to make our turkey to make our farm basket knockoff great gobblers and that's right a popeo rotisserie grill sit down get ready this is going to be awesome now before we get down into the mundane task of chopping vegetables i want to introduce you to someone special and that's my showtime ron popeo rotisserie grill look at that Ain't she a beauty? Okay, we're going to put some vegetables in the cavity of the turkey. So we're just going to cut these into pieces like so. No big deal. There's not going to be a lot of room in there because there's not. This isn't a huge turkey. So I think you can identify this stuff yourself. We've got an onion, some celery. And yeah, carrots. About that much. That will all go inside the cavity of the turkey. One last thing. We need about five cloves of garlic. We're going to smash those and throw them in there. And by the way, every hipster has a garlic dryer. You see that? You have one. Purple is cool, right? I guess. Meet our special guest, the Butterball Turkey. You can see this is not a very big turkey because our Popeil rotisserie does not really do well with stuff over 12 pounds. So how big is this one? It is 10.48 pounds. So I'm going to remember that's about 10 and a half pounds. I'm going to unwrap this. Uh, get everything inside of it and then tie it up so this doesn't while it's turning on the rotisserie flop all over the place if it does that the outer stuff burns and it doesn't turn out well so let me get this done this isn't really exciting uh, for you I could leave this on and you can read the newspaper if you stood on your head or something but there's anyway I'll save you that oh look there's a chainsaw on sale isn't that exciting where else but my channel do you get turkey sandwiches and chainsaws being discussed at the same time. Okay, so we're going to put our vegetables inside the turkey. Now I've rinsed this out in the sink and pulled the giblets and the gravy pack and all that out. And I want to get a variety of these vegetables in here. 
Okay, so these wings flopping around can't be like this, or it'll be in the rotisserie flopping around. This will get near the heating element, it'll get dried out and burnt. So we want this thing to cook evenly. So we're gonna use this twine here to tie this up and put it in a neat package before we put it on the rotisserie itself. Okay, there it is. You can see we've taken the twine, we've tied this all up so nothing's flopping around. The vegetables are held inside. And oh yeah, that right there is the plate. You're right. That is the plate that came as part of the infamous $4 package from the Spontaneous Folk Art video. Good eye. Now we're going to put the turkey on the rotisserie skewer by simply inserting this like so at the back and pushing it all the way through and trying to get it to come out uh, near the front legs. So there we've got the skewer through. It's balanced pretty well even we set it on this little gadget here and line these two pins up and there we go. It's ready to go in. Centered up a tad this way. Let me test it and see if it balances out well. Looks good. Okay, the next step is we're going to put butter all over the turkey. Butter. I don't want you to be confused. Butter, good butter, comes from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Easy way to remember butter is yellow, license plate is yellow from Wisconsin. It says on Wisconsin license plate, America's Dairy Land. That's for a reason. So out here on the West Coast, uh, they have these commercials that say, happy cows come from California. I don't think so. Uh, you know what? That is an alternate fact. That is uh, fake news. Uh, happy cows fr come from Wisconsin. And you know what? The cows in California want to go back to Wisconsin, and they're going to go back to Wisconsin. I'm going to make them go back to Wisconsin, and uh, and I'm going to have California pay for it, and they're going to be happy to pay for it, and it's going to be huge. So one more time, to be real clear, butter yellow, license plate yellow, Wisconsin. If you're going to subscribe to my channel, then you are going to use butter from Wisconsin and if you're not going to subscribe to my channel you are still going to use butter from Wisconsin. I, I don't have to talk to you about this anymore. So you got a handful of Wisconsin butter you're putting it all over the turkey like this and then you're sprinkling on a mixture of salt pepper and poultry seasoning. Thank you turkey sous chef. All right there it is butter all over the turkey and one last time if I like butter from Wisconsin, you should. Okay, so now it's going in the rotisserie. It just sits like this. Pops up there to engage the gear. Okay, the rotisserie's on. It's spinning around. We're going to take a minute to make sure nothing is going to flop all over the place. Now the rotisserie says about 12 minutes a pound. Um, and that varies. Uh, we're going to run this 10-pound uh, turkey uh, for about 90 minutes, and we're going to check it. Um, and the way to do that is we use uh, thermometers. Uh, th this thermometer is one that you can stick in the turkey and stick it in the oven and close the door. Well, if you do that here, this is going to spin around, so this won't work. I actually like this one. But at about 90 minutes into the process, we're going to take this and we're going to stick it into the turkey breast and check our temperature. All right, we're at about 45 minutes into uh, an hour and a half, uh, starting to brown up. At 90 minutes on this uh, 10 and a half pound turkey, we're going to put in the thermometer and check the temperature down into the breast and we're going to want that to be 165. We are at an hour and a half or 90 minutes into it on a 10 and a half pound turkey. So we're going to stop this for just a second and rotate it around to where the breast is up 
and the breast is up right there. So at 90 minutes or hour and a half, this 10 and a half pound turkey is at 145. So we're going to stick this in for about another 15 minutes and then check the temperature again. All right, that thermometer is really close. It's at about 162, 163. We're going to pull this out because it will continue to cook for just a tad and we don't want this to be overdone yet. It's almost at 165 right there. So we had 105 minutes on a 10 and a half pound bird. So that is 10 minutes per pound for a 10 and a half pound turkey in this Ron Popeil rotisserie grill. All right, we pulled the rotisserie skewers out of it and we're gonna let this rest. We don't wanna cut into it right away. We cover it up with a piece of tin foil and let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes. All right, that was the magic number because this is very, very tender and moist. Falls right off the bone. Okay, there's our bounty. We got a lot of turkey here. And I bet you know from watching my canning video, which you haven't seen, you're missing life. Watch my canning video with this carcass and all this stuff. We'll go in the freezer for the next time we make broth. All right, turkey's done. Here we go. This is the easy part. Mayonnaise on two pieces of bread. This bread is homemade sourdough. It comes from tailor-made bread in Agua Dulce. Now we're going to take a piece of the breast, cut it like so, put it on there, put cranberry sauce on it like so, and then put oh, a couple options I didn't tell you about. Here's some homemade sourdough bread dressing. We can put that on there like that. Well, yeah, we just happen to have some homemade turkey gravy. We can put it on there like that. And then we'll put the sourdough bread on. I don't like to cut it in half because, well, it's not going to last long enough to even be worrying about cutting it in half. Okay, redo. I've just been advised by the executive producer that you always cut the sandwiches in half diagonally so you can see what's on the inside. Ooh, ah. Right, there it is. My knockoff of the Las Vegas, Nevada Farm Basket Greg Gobbler Sandwich. And remember, if I like turkey sandwiches, you should.